Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to proceed to the word of the Lord this morning. Why not begin to appreciate God? I am telling you, we have so many reasons to give thanks to God. If we can indeed reflect upon his goodness. And I said, my own conclusion is that God has been good. And God is good. If you look around you, if you look around you, you will know and appreciate him that he has been good. Why not begin to appreciate the Lord? Say something good to him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. He brought you here this morning. He preserved your life throughout the past week. You are not a pro. You are not a pro concerning caring for yourself. In a country where, on average, 1,500 people are dying on a daily basis uh, for, from COVID, even as we speak, uh, it's an untold story, but people are still dying. Uh, but he kept you, even for another week. Uh, why not begin to appreciate him? Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory shows on our way. Why will do his good will? He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. me today. Say with authority today. I will be taught the word of the Lord. My heart is open. My ears are receptive. My spirit is willing. I will act upon the word. And the word of the Lord that I will hear today will transform my life. Put your hands together for the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. Lord Jesus Christ, I request that you will make us the simple. Yeah. And that this word of the Lord today will engineer change yeah. in our lives. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us all be seated, people of God. I want to welcome you to Koga Cathedral again. And it is my prayer that the blessings of the Lord will go home with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, the message of the Lord today is profound. And I want you to be very, very attentive. As you follow me, even as we go to hear from him. Today, the Lord has sent me to speak to you on a message that is titled, uh, A Forgetful People. A Forgetful People. Today's message is thought-provoking. It's self-evaluating. And God will minister to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will minister to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be defensive in your heart, even this morning. Open your Bible to the book of Ezekiel chapter 8. We are going to read uh, verse 17. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8, we are going to read verse 17. 
If you are there, say amen. amen. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 17. Let's go together. And he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they committed? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. In preparing for this uh, message, my initial decision was to go theological. To give you historical backgrounds and details of what was going on in the life of the people of Israel at this time uh, and the spiritual meanings of all the things that were shown to Prophet Ezekiel. I remember the exhortation of one of our professors that you should give them in a very simple way that they can understand. People of God, the Lord has sent me to speak to you about the nation of Israel. God wants you to learn from the nation of Israel. Israel at the peak of their comfort went to sleep on God. The result of that slumber was not good. The result of that slumber was not good. It was not good. The message of the Lord to you today is people of God arise awake from your spiritual slumber. Awake from your spiritual slumber. I have come to let you know that it is very dangerous when men sleep. It is very dangerous when men sleep. Spiritual slumber could be an act of omission or commission. Don't forget our theme for this month is when men sleep. Can you echo it with me? When men sleep. Spiritual slumber could be an act. It could also be an omission. For example, number one, when you begin to violate the ordinances of God, you are sleeping as a Christian. When you disobey, you begin to disobey his instructions. Remember the Sabbath or keep it holy. When you have a reason, an excuse for not keeping it holy, you are going to sleep as a Christian. When you remove yourself from fellowship, it is a sign of spiritual slumber. But the exhortation of God to you is arise, awake from your spiritual slumber. When you step back in your service of God, in your services to God, it is a sign. That spiritual slumber is creeping in. When you add other things to God, begin to add other things, a little here, there, and there, it is a sign of spiritual slumber. When you are called towards spiritual disciplines, when we call for fasting, and you are not excited about it, they have come again. When we call for prayers, and you are not there, it is a sign of spiritual slumber. When you harbor secret sins, or open sins, when you harbor secret sins, it is a sign of spiritual slumber. 
On Wednesday here, we gave ourselves an example during Bible study. It was similar to this also because we're studying the book of Jeremiah. Now, when you go borrow or purchase a child to file for tax, and you now see Jesus uh, Rodriguez uh, belonging to a Nigerian that is uh, never married to a Spanish person in their tax returns. It is a sign of spiritual slumber. The message of today, or the passage that we read today in the book of Ezekiel chapter 10, is the climax of what the prophecy that started from chapter 8. The climax of it was chapter 10. Hallelujah. And the end result of that climax is that the glory of the Lord departed from the temple. I pray in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Lord will not depart from you. <laughs> the glory of the Lord will not depart from you. When the glory departs, everybody becomes vulnerable. Israel became so vulnerable. That their enemies had easy access to oppress them. It went as bad as the enemy taking the king, the king of Israel, and they pluck out his eyes. When the glory of God departs, a believer becomes vulnerable. You will not be vulnerable. Yeah. The journey of Israel with God started with Abraham, and God made glowing promises to them. Let's read some of them. Number one was uh, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. God chose them and gave them glowing promises. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. Let's go together. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah, what God told them in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, 23 to 25. God made glowing promises to them. Deuteronomy chapter 11, 2 to 25. Let's go together. Then the Lord will drive out all these nations. Amen. Amen. Do you have your Bible on, with you? Yes. Let's go together. Deuteronomy 11, 23 to 25. Let's go together. Yes. Then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you. And you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourself. Every place on which the soul of your foot shall train shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of God and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread. Just as he said to you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No nation, no nation, and God meant it until they allowed the glory of God to depart. Everyone that was confronting them was falling for their sake. And I pray in the name of Jesus, every power that will come after you will fall for your sake. Amen. He assured them. Let's go to Genesis 28, 14 to 15. Genesis 28, 14 to 15. Genesis 28, 14 to 15. Let's go together. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you 
wherever you go, and bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here are these people of God. There was a man named uh, Bath Lance. Both lands. He was the director of uh, the Office of Management and Budget to President Jimmy Carter. He once said, if he ain't broke, don't fix it. If he ain't broke, I want to hear you. If he ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what he said. Hallelujah. It was not broken in Israel. But Israel tried to fix it. God was enough for Israel. But Israel thought that he was not enough. They tried to fix it. Many bad lands rose up in Israel to one Israel. One of them was Prophet Jeremiah. Another one was Prophet uh, Ezekiel. They won Israel. But Israel did not heed the warning. And they committed fatal error against God. And uh, they were badly damaged. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not be damaged. Yeah. You will not be damaged. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. you will not be damaged. Yeah. God warned them not to fix it. He told them, don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Focus on me and me alone. He is a jealous God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the promises that he made to Israel, he has made to you. The day you raise up your hands to accept him as your Lord and Savior, I have come to let you know that he is able to keep his promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't fix it. He ain't broken. Don't fix it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. This was one of his uh, exhortations to the people. He warned them. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 7. Let's go together if you are there. Joshua 1 verse 7. Let's go together. Only be strong and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses your servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That you may prosper wherever you go. You want to prosper in God? Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Focus on him and him alone. Hallelujah. He promised Israel greatness. He made Israel great. He will make you great. Yeah. That amen is very weak. Yeah. He promised Israel blessings. He blessed Israel. The Lord God Almighty will bless you. Yeah. He promised Israel protection. He protected Israel. The Lord God Almighty will protect you. Yeah. He promised Israel defense. He defended Israel. Even when they were not there, he defended them. He was speaking. He even spoke through the mouth of a donkey. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. He defended them. He will defend you. Amen. He will defend you. Amen. I've come to let you know, people of God, if only you will stick to him alone, if only you will embrace him alone, if you only will, you will forsake every other God and stick to this God of Israel, he will fulfill his promise concerning you. Amen. He did it for Israel. He promised and he fulfilled his promise. In your life, the Lord will fulfill his promise. Amen. None of his promises failed concerning Israel. Let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 21 
verses 43 to 45. Let's see what he did. Joshua 21, 43 to 45. You are there, say amen. amen. Let's go together. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he has sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around, according to all that he has sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered them. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hallelujah. Not a word. He did what he promised. Hallelujah. I don't know how you say it in English. There's a proverb uh, in Yoruba that says that uh, you have uh, seen eyes and you're looking for eyes. Uh, no eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, everything God promised them as a pointer to the future of dependency on God, he has done. People of God, if God has ever done you any good that you can point to, let that be a guide towards the future that he is still going to take care of you. The Lord will take care of you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Run your own race, stay on your path, and let the Lord lead you to your destination. You will make it there. You will make it there. In the mighty name of Jesus. The end result is that God indeed made Israel very, very comfortable until they became too comfortable. Too comfortable. I want to encourage you, people of God, hold on to him. Don't fix it. Don't fix it. Don't fix it. This is what God laid in my heart, that there are some things after this service that you are going to go home and garbage. Don't fix it. He loves you. He cares about you. Don't fix it. Don't keep any accursed things in your home. Don't fix it. He loves you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made Israel very comfortable. When Israel was going to enter into comfort in the land that is flowing with milk and honey, when God was going to relocate you, people of God, to the land of America, a land that is flowing with milk and honey, God warned Israel. He warned Israel. But people of God hear this, uh, hear this, uh, can, you, can everybody say comfort can be, uh, can blind Yes. Comfort blinded Israel. They were too comfortable. They were too comfortable. Comfort blinded them. And we are supposed to learn from Israel. God, people of God, let me give you this testimony. God has prospered us in Koga Cathedral. Yes. Hallelujah. He has indeed prospered us. I looked back, I looked, I flipped these papers, and I looked at the lives of people. God has indeed prospered us in Koga Cathedral. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The excuse we used to give in, uh, in the bronze for not buying cars was uh, no parking. But it's still no parking now. All of us are buying cars. We started with Highlanders. No longer Highlanders now. Some moved to Pilot. No longer Pilot now. It has indeed prospered us. We saw Jeep. Now it's Range Rover. It's Range. It's Lexus. God has prospered us in Koga Cathedral. In your comfort, people of God, please do not forget him. 
Do not forget him. He has indeed prospered us. Do you know that last Sunday, in a space of less than 30 minutes, we donated $40,000? He has indeed prospered us. In this church, when we were even smaller than this, in a space of 30 minutes, twice we donated 100,000, twice in this church. 100,000, 30 minutes, 100,000, 30 minutes. He has indeed prospered us. To raise 5,000 in those days, so you know and reflect some of the people that were here. There was one that we got a very big banquet. We sold tickets. We went. We did. We did all that we could. We cooked. We dressed well. We pressed people. We encouraged them. We set them up. <laughs> Everything you know to do on the book, we did. It cost us We fed them <laughs> all night. <laughs> they ate the food. We spent over $3,000 feeding them. By the time we finished the fundraising, <laughs> and we asked the, in fact, we even appointed chairman, VIP, all of those ones. God has been, indeed prospered us. By the time the treasurer will give us the result of the night, <laughs> we wish we didn't go through all that labor. <laughs> now that you are a homeowner, people of God, now that you own cars, now that you have degrees, now that you are married, now that you have children, now that you have titles, now that you are somebody, do not forget. Oh, thank you. Don't forget the days of firewood. I told you the story of firewood. Do not forget the days of hawking on the street for mom. Don't forget. When you hear the story of people the story of people, then you will know that God indeed is a good God. The one that you will count for nothing, that this one, forget it. I was telling me the story of our life last Sunday, and I said, it can only be God. When mom and dad are gone at a very early age, and you're being shipped from one place to another, one place to another to be used, to be used, to be used as a young child. And God still prosper you at the end of the day. Do not forget. Do not forget the days of food without meat. I know you all came from a very rich family. But don't forget. <laughs> Do not forget the days of walking miles. To get to your destination. We always have that excuse. Ah, it's not far. It's not far. It's seven miles. It's not far. Now when we go to the store, my wife wants me to park in front of the, of the store for her to come out. They're looking for parking close to the door. It's not far. Do not forget. Do not forget the days of uh, passed down clothes. Third generation. <laughs> the one that your brother has used and is already torn in the back. And you go and get it patched. Don't forget those days. Don't let a suit deceive you. Don't forget. That is why we must reach out to the ones that are less privileged. Yes. 
Do not forget where you are coming from. Don't forget the days of living in the basement apartment. Now that you own a full house. Don't forget. We are quick to forget. Don't forget the days of working in McDonald's. Now, you are, now that you are the director uh, and supervisor of everybody. Don't misbehave. Don't forget. God warned Israel before they enter into comfort. Let's read what God told them in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10, uh, chapter 8, verses 10 to 19. Maybe you will learn from them. We know how it panned out for them. So maybe we can learn and put our life in order with him. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 to 19. 8, 10 to 19. Let's go together if you are there. Let's go together. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he had given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his status, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built houses and gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which you were, and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which which your fathers did not know, you might be hum that he might humble you, and that he might to do you good in the end. Then you will say in your heart, My power and might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that you may establish his covenant, which is sworn to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. I was a warning to Israel. They had this. They had this. It's like the dog that wants to get lost. We now hear the whistle. They had this. He knew what would happen along the journey. What comfort could do to any human being. So they had this. It is for us now to learn from them. So that comfort will not blind us. Comfort is what makes a man, when he has now gained money, to buy television and on Sunday morning say, Ah, Asena is playing today. <laughs> ah, in fact, they are playing Manchester. So I will cross my leg with this television that I bought with my I will now watch Asena during service. Has forgotten the day when there was no TV. Could not afford it. Israel went to sleep on God. They tried to fix it in their comfort. They were committing secret sins and they were claiming that God won't even see. Some people went and bought some uh, big uh, agbada. When they buy their hot drink, they put it in the agbada and hang it in their closet. When their wives are not there, so they can gain some energy, they shock themselves. They go into the closet and do, a, do some uh, little drink. 
and come out now with red eyes. <laughs> Authority. Secret sin. God is watching. I have concluded and we concluded here on Wednesday that nobody gets away with anything. Nobody gets away with anything. It's a matter of time. So I want to encourage you people of God, run away from secret sin. Israel committed secret sin. They forsook God and they tried to fix it. And in chapter 10, people of God, the glory departed from the temple. The glory departed from Israel. The glory departed from Judah. The Assyrians came, they destroyed Israel. The Assyrians came, they removed Israel from the map. Nebuchadnezzar came with the Babylonians. They destroyed Judah. They destroyed the temple. Because the, what makes the temple the temple had already departed. It's now a structure. Who was Dagon before this time? The bars before Elijah. Who was that? But by the time the glory departed, Israel became vulnerable. Nebuchadnezzar came, first of all, wanted to punish them. He laid siege. Let hunger begin to wire them. He laid siege. By the time he was ready to come in, all the men of war were running uh, different directions. There was no longer any coordination. Whereas when Israel was destroyed and Josiah was the king, they were able to withstand the Assyrians. A small nation, a very tiny nation. Superpower they were able to withstand. But by the time the glory departed in chapter 10, they were very vulnerable. Nebuchadnezzar came, destroyed uh, the temple, looked for everyone that was wearing nice suit, everyone that claimed to own a house, everyone that was uh, in government, every notable, if you dress well, you are gone. You gather them together, gather them together, and hey, 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 like you're directing animals took them to exile. Exile. The one that was very shocking to me, which one, the one that I, ah, made me to cringe. And this is where you must be careful. If your family member is eating that black uh, ant, you better warn that your family member, otherwise at night you won't be able to sleep when their stomach is making noise. You won't be able to sleep. People like Ezekiel, the prophet, the righteous, ended up in exile. Daniel, the one that we said we uh, will not bow, ended up in exile. The righteous also were taken. And they all ended up in exile. When a Christian is asleep spiritually, the glory of God can depart from such a Christian. And such a Christian can become vulnerable. You will not be vulnerable. Amen. When a Christian is asleep, the enemy can sow tears. Remember Matthew chapter 13? The enemy can sow tears. They didn't come during the day. They didn't come when the owner of the field was there. They came at night when the owner was asleep. When a Christian is asleep, the enemies can sow tears. I pray in the name of Jesus, may the Lord keep you alert. Amen spiritually Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just quickly mention three things that uh, Ezekiel saw. Number one, he saw the elders. He started from the top. The elders. The elders in the church. The elders in the church. These were the reasons Israel was des destroyed. He saw the elders. All of them, they had secret idols. The elders. The elders. 
The message of the Lord to you today, if you have anything that is not of God in your house, if you came to church today, you will gather them together and burn them. He saw the elders. Don't allow any accursed things in your house. Those accursed things, they have not helped you thus far. Let God be the one that will help you. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 11 to 12. These are the things that uh, uh, Ezekiel saw. 8, to, 8, 11 to 12. Ezekiel 8, 11 to 12. Let's go together. Ezekiel 8, 11 to 12. Let's go together. And there stood before them, read it loudly, let's go together again. And there stood before them 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel. And in their midst stood Jazaniah, the son of Sephan. Each man had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the room of his idol. For they say, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has not forsaken us. In the dark. In the dark. Whatever you cannot do when pastor is there. Whatever you cannot do. Uh, whatever must not be caught in your hands. In the dark. The elders. The ones that should know better. The elders. They were in the rooms of their idols. Each one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The women were not spared. The women shifted their allegiance. They had to follow the lead to foreign gods. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8 verse number 14. They shifted their allegiance from God to foreign gods. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 14. Ezekiel 8, 14. Let's go quickly. Let's read it together. Are you there? Yes. Ezekiel 8, verse 14. Let's go together. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house. And to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz was... Uh, or is a god of fertility. God of fertility. The women lost their sense of direction. They were serving and worshipping that idol. Hallelujah. The rest of the people were not also spared. They were worshipping the sun. Ezekiel 8, 15 to 16. These were the things they did. Ezekiel 8, 15 to 16. If you are there, say amen. amen. Ezekiel 8. Let's go together. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again, you will see greater abomination than this. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And there at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they were worshipping the sun towards the east. These were the abomination of Israel. Abominations of Israel. People of God, when the consequences came, no one was spared. No one was spared. Jeremiah was spared at the end of the day. He remained in the land. He was not taken. He was spared at the last minute. But no other person was spared. There was no table. They left the beggars. They left the ones that can't walk. They left the ones that can uh, the, the ones that had issues. The ones that are not useful for anybody. They just left them to just suffer without any help. They called them the remnants. This is what happened to Judah as a consequence. So we know. I'll tell you what you must take home. Second Chronicles 36, 15 to 20. This is what happened to Judah. Second Chronicles 36, 15 to 20. Second Chronicles 
36, 15 to 20. Let's go together quickly. And the Lord God of their father sent warnings. Let's start all over again. I want to emphasize that warnings. It's not that they didn't know. It's not that God is so wicked. It's not that God just wanted to punish them. Uh, when you tell a child, don't put your hand in that hot water, and the child keeps going there, eh, if the child gets burnt, that child will learn a lesson. Will learn a lesson. That, that water is hot. Yes, let's go together. And the Lord God of their father sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them. Because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed through the, at, the, at his prophets. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore, he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with a sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on a young man or virgin on the aged or the weak. He gave them all into his hands and all the articles of the, from the house of God, great and small, the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of their leaders. All these he took to Babylon. Then they burned the house of God broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burn all his palaces with fire, and destroy all his precious possession. And those who escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. Thought-provoking. He who has ears, let him hear. What the Spirit is saying to the church. Israel and Judah were destroyed. They ended up as slaves in exile. You will not become slaves. Amen. The devil and slaves, all of those gods did not save them. Don't have any rendezvous with the devil. He enslaves. He has no remedy for you. I want to encourage you. Resist him. At all times. This is what you must take home, people of God. Take an inventory of your spiritual life. That's number one. Return to full obedience. Take an inventory. Examine yourself. Nobody ever admits that they are not doing enough. People always find excuse. Ah, my God, I'm serving my God. Ah, brother, sister, you are not. Ah, I'm serving, brother, yeah, I'm serving my God. People don't admit. But in the secrecy of your heart, be real. Be truthful to yourself. You know your weak points. You know what you're not doing well, even right now. You know it. Even if you're not going to admit to others, admit to yourself. Yes. And take steps to get yourself back on track. Take an inventory of your spiritual life. Return to full obedience. Return to prayers. Return to wholehearted fellowship. Wholehearted fellowship. Speak good of the gathering of, peop of the of people of God. Speak good of the gathering of the people of God. Return to service. Fix your church attendance. Fix it. If you must eat, then you must go to church. Let no bitterness be found in your heart. Let me close with this passage. Malachi chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. When you have done all of this, this is what God will do in return for you. Please go home, people of God. Examine yourself. Correct that needs to be corrected. Remove every accustoms. I sent it to you. You have it yourself. These are your enemies. Remove them from your home. Rest upon God alone. If you do it, he's going to take care of you. He's done it before. Even before you begin to acquire all of those uh, accursed things. Don't harbor them. Don't harbor them in your home. 
and the Lord will defend you. Amen. Malachi chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. Let's read it together if you are there. Malachi 4, 2 to 3. Let's go together. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his hand, in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like store-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, but they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Let us all rise. We're going to pray. What that is saying is that when you fear him, he's going to make you comfortable, young and old. When you reverence him, he's going to make you comfortable. Hallelujah. We are going to tell Jesus that he will keep you on track. Uh, remove every distraction. There are so many distractions out there. Distractions, they come subtly. You are distracted. You begin to speak evil of, of things of God. It's part of distraction. By the time that matures, you begin to see the effect is eroding your spiritual life. It's distraction. You will not be distracted. Amen. Ah, you will not be distracted. Amen. I'm going to tell Jesus, remove every distraction from me. Remove every distraction from my life. Keep me focused on you. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Keep me on track. Remove distractions. Far away from me. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. Every form of distraction, remove them far away from me. Keep me on track. Because you are my Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I pray. You are going to pray, people of God. You are going to tell Jesus. You're going to rededicate your life. Press that reset button. I don't know. Even if you, are, you feel that you are righteous, there are areas in your life that need to be fixed. Press that reset button. I'm going to tell Jesus, I rededicate my life even unto you. I rededicate my life even unto you, even on this day. Keep me in your light and drive away every form of darkness from all around me. Distraction is darkness. Keep me in your light and drive away every form of darkness around me. Say, Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, begin again with me. I rededicate my life even unto you. Keep me away from every form of darkness. Shall we pray? Father, open your mouth. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rededicate my life unto you, Lord Jesus. Keep me in your light. Keep me in your light. Remove every form of darkness from all around me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray.